starts shocking and she looks like a star Yeah, she's got the style that makes you think she's made out of gold She says she likes it better when we go off road yeah. I'm gonna make it worth your while I'm gonna make it worth your time I'm gonna make it worth your while When she's with me When those roll down, radio on I think we could go far, we don't need money We can skip that part All I want is her to be with me She's got a ticket to my heart I got the sun in my eyes It can get better than when she makes that smile Yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio She makes that smile, yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio yeah. Hello? Hello, welcome! Oh! Hey. <laughs> what happened? Something, my, my microphone cord snagged on something Oh my goodness. Yeah, I just so I have my new little kitchen that I'm getting used to and the the drawer handles on the front 
have like a little overhang and they always catch my pockets and I'll like yank the drawer out and pull my pants down. It's terrible. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, you guys <laughs> got your fun. kitchen remodeled? No, we just moved. And I have my oh, own little right. kitchen now. It's fantastic, except for that. It's just a perfect pocket height. Oh. I said, thank you. Welcome to my guest co-host. That's Lexi McGrath. And yeah. we are streaming out to um, two destinations today. We're streaming out to my YouTube channel here, Serenity Studio Art. And we are streaming out to one of my Facebook groups, which is called Artists with Disabilities and Chronic Illness. Because I, I'm an artist with a disability. I have a vision, I have a vision disability. Oh my goodness. I have a vision disability and Lexi's part of my group. If she wants to, if she wanted to share what her disability or chronic illness is, did you want to share that? Yeah, I'm in the chronic illness camp. I have chronic fatigue syndrome and a movement disorder. Oh, oh thank you for sharing with us. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. oh yeah. So I, I, I probably don't have it in there now. I should, I need to put the link to the Facebook group where it's a new Facebook group and we're um, inviting members and welcoming members all the time. If you feel like that you are qualify as an artist with some kind of disability or chronic illness, you're certainly welcome to join this new Facebook group. And let's see, so and we do things to support each other in there and just share our art and talk so, about our unique barriers yes and hello Malacom. hello Malacom. you seem new to Malacom. oh it's mobile are you, are it's you, jay do you know Malacom? it's yeah that's jay oh that's jay, oh, jay. yeah okay. oh my and goodness hi, i didn't Anthony, know he was gonna show up and Grayscale Painting and Alec and Cool Gamer. Hi, hi everybody. Share this out. Share this out on your community tabs or or on your social media and share this out to try to um, see if we can get more people join us today. And yes, like I said, we're we're also streaming two places at the same time. This channel, plus we're streaming out to that fa one of my Facebook groups that I just mentioned. Hello to those people that might be watching live or in the replay of the Facebook group. Because this does pertain to them. Because this, I am doing this weekly series of healing through art. And we're following along in this book called Create Your Life Book by Tamara Laporte. And I will, if usually I link, I remember to link that down in the description box. But I, if I didn't have it down there now in the description box of this book, I will put the, not the link, but I will put the name of, give credit to this book in the description box, at least after the live stream. So to, let's see, are you, so Lexi, are you, you're working on a big project that you told us about in our Facebook group? Oh the, my gosh, not today, I'm not. Uh -huh. <laughs> but how's that can you want to tell us about your big project? Yeah. It feels, it's a little bit silly when I describe it. Basically, I've cut up a bunch of cardboard and glued it to a bigger piece of cardboard to make a wall hanging. And now I'm paper macheing over all of that to kind of smooth it out and make it not look like cardboard, hopefully. And I think I've put about six hours into it so far and I've got a little corner of it paper mache oh so the six hours is you were able to do the one corner so the little corner you saw was about one hour oh okay yeah it has there's been some progress mostly i've gotten a lot of really bad television watched and i don't have much to show for it look at that oh so wait so how much so, like, how much area have you covered on it now? Ooh. I want to say about two feet by one foot. 
Wow. Square or rectangle. So I'll just be generous and say two by one feet. So have you done any project like this before, like a big wall hanging? I did a smaller one that was also simpler, didn't have quite as many edges to try to work the paper into. And it went pretty well. I mean, it still took a long time, but it came out kind of cool. I don't love the paint job on it, but I figure I can stare at it for a while, mm -hmm. see what I want to do with it next. Right. So after the whole thing gets covered with paper mache, you are painting it? Yeah, I'll probably paint the whole thing kind of a solid color and then mm -hmm. decide if I want to either paint all the raised areas a different color or collage on top. The last one I just painted in different colors, but I I used a matte paint, which didn't look that great with the texture. You can still kind of see the cardboard and the paper mache texture, and I just didn't like that the matte paint didn't look smooth. Oh, uh, well, you could add a you can add a satin or glossy varnish on top. Yeah, I think I would want to do like a a wash maybe of transparent paint so that it actually picked up the texture. Oh, okay. It's the fact that I used something that is almost like I'm trying to hide the texture and doing a really bad job. Oh, I see. You need to embrace it. Mm hmm How about you? Well, I know you've been painting up a storm. Yeah, so I'm I am I'm planning for two art auctions. It was going to be only one auction, art auction, because I did start my own Facebook art auction group. Um, and then just in the past couple, and I had, and then just in the past couple of days, I, um, I had heard back from an art auction group that I had inquired into and never heard back from them. So I assumed I wasn't going to get accepted into it. Yeah. But she, it's a small art auction group, probably around the same size as ours which is 500 people now, but um, 500 members, but um, her art auction group has been around for about two years. So, and mine, I renamed an old art sharing group. And that's why we have around 500, we, we gained 40, 40 members in the past week, but um, that's the only reason why we have ours similar because it used to be an art sharing group and I renamed it and made it and changed the type of group it is. So, yeah, it's an art auction group. And then she called me back. I mean, she contacted me back, which I wasn't expecting and invited me to be either in a September or her October. And I and there, each one of those has a theme. And I like the theme. I like the theme of the September one better. So even though it's kind of a time crunch that, that I'm going to that I have to do she and her art her art auction requires seven i need seven pieces wow and they have to be relatively new so so that and and then i'm trying to put five pieces in the art auction that's going to be run from august 20 in my art auction group and i should put all these links maybe maybe at some point i'm going to during this live stream i'm going to put the facebook link to the one facebook group and then of artists with disabilities and chronic illness that facebook group then i'm going to put a link to the Facebook group, which is art, my new art auction group. And then I need to put the name, <laughs> the credit for this book Ooh. that we're following. You got your work cut out for you. So I'm working on around five, five or so, five or six paintings at once, but they're all in different stages. Like there's two paintings that I started a few years ago and I'm adding finishing touches to and adding just a little thing to them. And then some of them I'm starting from the beginning and so they're in all different stages of completion and that, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Very nice. I'm impressed that you had that many started paintings lying around. That I had, that I'm working on that many, what do you mean? That, 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 you that amount that at the same many, time? Like partially finished projects that you could just pick up. Oh yeah. From actually from a few years ago that, that, So, um, yeah, I have tons and tons of artwork, tons of, and, and tons of artwork that, 
you some of it's on stretch most of it's not on stretch canvas on most of it's on paper that i've done in art journals and i just have tons of artwork that i just can i can look at and review and see okay could this be put in could this be put in an, an auction and stuff or do i want to create something new and things like that so yeah i guess i probably have a lot of old forgotten art but i tend to find it look at it and be like i don't know where i was going with this mm -hmm. and then I guess yeah this, I guess then you can just fresh. decide a new direction for it yeah get get your prompt cards out at that point uh, yeah i've used those prompt cards three or four times not lat i did i was using them last week and the week before but i don't i'm not going to use them on the the new paintings because oh really i just use them on I use my art prompt cards on like art journal pages or yeah. You had that one you just posted with the packaging though. Right? Mm. Didn't you use your prompt? Oh cards yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that one was I started it. That's right. It was an unfinished painting in my art journal. And then I used some art prompts to yes, that's right. That's the only one. And then that I used some art prompts to continue it and i and just through a few art probably i i only remember the packaging prompt i only used the packaging prompt but maybe there were some other prompts i followed and then i've continued on on and finished it on my own but i did use a few prompts yes that's right have you been so, good about your but, prompts have you actually been doing everything you pull out or have you found some that you're like i'm not i'm not doing that what, say that again? Have there been any prompts that you pulled out and realized you're like, I don't want to use this? Yes, all the time. <laughs> That's the problem I have with art prompt cards. Yeah. Oh, many times when I've used them, like in the past two weeks, I, I pick one. I'm like, no, I don't I don't want to get my stencils out. No, I don't yep. want to do anything. And I pick them. No, I, that, I don't want to do anything messy right now. No, no. And then I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd done that with my my prompt tin. When I pulled texture paste, I was like, oh, I'm going to be good. I'm going to use the texture paste on this hint. It was so awful. What a mistake. But, you know, I learned for next time that I shouldn't use the texture paste right on the tin. I should put it on tissue paper and collage it on. Oh, I don't know what you mean by putting on tissue paper and collage it on. Oh, so you can stencil, take a piece of tissue paper and stencil your texture paste on there. I, you'll then, have to show me. I can't even picture what you're talking about. Okay. I think you're going to have to show me sometime. <laughs> okay. I mean, I do have a piece of it, but that doesn't really tell you the process. Because I just use texture paste with a palette knife. That's how I use it. Yeah, that's that's what I do too. But instead of applying it straight to your painting, apply it the same way, but onto a piece of tissue paper. And then let that dry. And you can you glue mean the whole tissue paper You mean instead of using on. taking the texture paste out of directly out of the jar with a palette knife you're saying you no take you, it, you still do that the on same. a tissue paper and and take your palette knife and 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 dip into it from when it's on the tissue paper no 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 no, no. so instead of you know you apply your texture paste through your stencil onto your canvas that you're working on mm -hmm. just instead of the canvas put it onto a piece of tissue paper you do yeah, everything I don't, know. The same. I don't understand what you're talking about. So okay. you'd have to show me. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I mean, but, I can okay. do it right now if you want, or if you want to get started on this. That no, is let's just, let's get started. Okay. And, and what are you working on today? What is your surf? Your substrate's going to be packaging. Yep. Oh, I no, like okay. funky little shapes, and I realized I can make them. Nice. Well, we'll okay, see before we start reading this chapter of the book today for what our activity of healing through art is going to be, which actually is going to be about painting inspired by meditation. Let's say hello again. And before I start reading, let's say hello again. Hi, Lisa Mangus. Let's say more. Hi, Lisa. Forgiveness. No, texture paste on tissue instead of canvas. What? Um, Lisa. I don't know what Lisa's saying. And hi, Radical Changes. And hello, Jay. That's Malakum. And hi, Anthony. That's Grayscale Painting. And 
and cool gamer hello and alec hello so let's get started and if we don't know oh yes that's right lexi's keeping a, an eye on our facebook group if anybody's watching from the facebook group it, is there anybody no in classic facebook fashion there is nobody watching yeah in classic <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get started with this um chapter which we've been following as long in this series of healing through art. And this one is called Following the Light. Engage in meditative painting. And the contributing artist for this chapter is Alina Hennessy. I've, I've done some of her lessons. I like her. She's very, she does very meditative art. And following this thing called this Japanese, she follows this Japanese way of painting where, um, she embraces mistakes. She em actually Ooh. embraces them while she's painting. How and there's a Japanese that? name for it. And maybe she'll say it in this chapter and I forget the word for it. Okay, so let's get, oh. In the painting shown opposite, which is this one, See, very big, big, simple shapes plus then some tiny detail. Okay, so in this painting, which is by Alina Hennessy, I explored expressing light in abstract and symbolic ways. Not only did I create layers of paint to show the elusive and ever-changing qualities of light, but I also added actual gold leaf, which adds highly reflective quality to the works. I was also interested in creating works with the intentional energy of I am. In other words, what lies at our true essence? I, what is invoking a feeling of the mystery and the depth of our existence is of much interest to me as is the perceptual changing nature of reality. The delicate leaf forms in the source painting are representative of the fragility of existence. To me, in the end, they create a feeling of celebration and gratitude that every day is indeed a gift. Exploration, finding your center. Number one, meditation. To bring painting in, to begin painting in this fashion, Allow yourself to take 15 minutes to close your eyes and breathe deep into your belly and allow your breath to move up and down your torso, even sending breath and energy all the way down into your toes. All right. And so up, I guess we'll, we'll see you guys in 15 minutes after we do that. And what? Oh, I'm just, I'm just kidding because. And up to the crown. Okay. Let's see, up to the, did it say 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. okay, and up to the <laughs> like crown of your head. <laughs> Feel the stillness within yourself and listen to your heart. What does it have to share with you now? Alternatively, you could take a quiet walk into your neighborhood, simply nothing, and um, simply noticing or stare out a window and begin to take in all that you see in an objective fashion, giving yourself time to feel where you are at, what your body, heart, and mind are co communicating to you is a valuable step in intuitive and intentional art making. When you close your, when you, when you close your eyes, what shades of light and shadow do you see? How does light illuminate your world in your daily life? And what does the gift of light give? And that was number one. Number two was about reflection. Well, did we want, so have you, have you meditated much, Lexi? Not a lot. I have tried it a few times. Mm-hmm. And 
I think I was doing the wrong kinds of meditation for me. There is no wrong. <laughs> but there's a wrong for you, though, right? Oh, like everyone okay. has to find the kind that works for them. But yeah, I wrote it off because I was doing the wrong, wrong kind. It was wrong for you, you said? Yes. I was doing a lot of like focus on your body sensation stuff. Yeah. And I can't stand doing that. So it mm -hmm. was not helpful. How about you? I, I, be I belong to the Calm app, C-A-L-M app, which is, teaches you all different kinds of meditations and guided meditations as well as, as well as just silent meditations. And I prefer guided meditations and I prefer the 10 minute guided meditations. And they, they have like six, five different hosts that give a, an, a meditation for the day. And what I've learned about meditation is that it's, it's about um, noticing your thoughts. Like, so, so you can have a thought enter your mind and then instead of pushing it away or saying you shouldn't be here or go away, you allow the thought or feeling like you just notice the, the thought or feeling and you welcome it and just say, oh, I see you anger. So yeah, anger, what do, what do you want to say? What do you, what do you have? To, is there something you wanted to say? Or welcome, welcome in and don't push, the, don't push the feeling or thought away and let it be there and, and uh, feel, let it say what it's going to say if it says anything. And, um, and then you can, and then something that you can politely show at the door after a while or. So th the point is, is just, I, what I learned about it, meditation that was helpful to me is that you, you can observe, like you can be observed. You can, you just take the stance of observing what's there without judgment. So that's, that was very helpful. So you're not saying you shouldn't be here. Get away, anger, go away, <laughs> anger, stop bugging me, da, 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 like that. Cause that's usually kind of how my mind works. Yeah. So I, it take. so I like, so I've read, I have learned from meditation that you're taking the non-judgmental stance of observing and you can, and not being afraid of those thoughts or feelings. So you're letting them in and, and just, and, and non, and then when you, when you have the non-judgmental observation attitude there, they don't control you. Like you're stepping back. It's like that, then that feeling or thought doesn't even control you. You've become detached. You've become, you've become detached from it so that it's like, oh, well, uh, like you can see that that thought or feeling isn't going to like cause you the trouble you thought it was. It's like, you're looking at it non-judgmentally and, and um, a, a, as an observer and, and it's easy to let the idea or the thought or the feeling pass. Like it's easy for it to pass. And then, so um, that's, that's one of the things that I've been learned, learned about meditation. Yeah. And I've done so that I one. Find, I found it so helpful that through the calm app, C-A-L-M. And I, I really like guided meditations. A lot of times in guided meditations, they say, take the deep breath and breathe in. And like, that's never really helped me a lot. But I learned in this, this um, meditation that you notice the breath. You, what I like is you notice the breath as soon as it hits your nostril. And you and it's not just about taking a deep breath and breathing out. It's like I notice, like you said, she guide you through like some of them not not have them all of them are the same but the ones that i like where she says notice and and focus on that sensation where the where the air first hits your nostril and then follow that breath the sensation of it what is the sensation as you breathe in and you're taking the deep breath and you you keep and you when you notice all when you micro focus on this tiniest little thing it's like so relaxing because it makes you focus on the moment. When you focus on the present moment, then you're not thinking about the, you're not worrying about the future. You don't feel guilty about the past. And you are so micro focused on the tiniest little thing that is the present moment. And I find, so I, I need to practice that more recently, but in the past, that's in the past. That's what that's helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the one I've actually been picking up right now. I, found one little guided meditation that was like, hey, notice when the breath hits your nostrils. And I've been, I haven't had to go back and listen to it. It's just every time I notice I'm having trouble focusing, I do that for a minute or two. And I yeah, think- Yeah, so I had, 
So I had told you about the focus. You, you did. Did you listen to one or some of the, the focus meditations? I started listening to one and I got so mad. It triggered my movement thing. It triggered what? My movement disorder. It's triggered by such weird things. Oh. But I can probably try again. The, the issue is that I try to do it when I'm having focus problems, which is part of my disorder. Mm -hmm. So then I think it's easier for me to get set off. But if I try to do it when I'm starting out a little bit calmer, it might be better. Hmm. One, there's another host there who in the Calm app, he actually has ADHD himself. I don't know. Is your is your movement disorder related to ADHD? So I don't know. It's probably tied to a dopamine deficiency. This is going to get really like oh. technical, and I'm not a doctor, so I could be making uh -huh. all of this up. But uh, attention and movement are regulated largely by dopamine so oh. you know it's it's kind of tied together i also might have had adhd beforehand to compound this issue so i don't know it's complicated oh, okay because one of the hosts at the calm app he had he has a history of adhd and a lot of his med daily meditations are like would like they're help. I think they would be helpful to people with ADHD, but, and I think, and they have so many theme based guided meditations at the Calm app that even they might even have some meditations, especially for ADHD. Then they also have movement. They have this one woman who's also does a daily, a daily meditation. That's movement, movement with meditation. Maybe you, oh. maybe you might like that. You have to look, you have to scroll over a little bit, but she's near, she's at the top because she's one of the daily presenters. She's one of them. And um, it's about movement with meditation. So you might like that with the movement. Yeah, that could be doubly helpful. I'm going to write this down. Do you know her name? Actually, both uh, of not names. off the top of my head. I could, but when you go to, I'll, I'll let you know later. I'll have to look it up later. But okay. she's she's at the top, like on, look at the app when they have, on the Calm app, near the top of the app where they're showing the daily presenters. She's one of the ones, and maybe, and she, you might have to scroll over to the, you have to swipe over so you can see her over at the far right side. Cause they, they have like six daily meditation presenters that all six of them give a daily app every day. I mean, a daily meditation every day. So I, I just have to let you know that later. All right. And I have written down stuff to help me look it up. If you forget. Hi, Wisconsin, Greg. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you guys. Hi everyone. Let's see what, um, before I read on, let's just see if anybody in the chat has um, added to our conversation or said anything. Yeah, give us some meditation tips if you're any good at it. How, who's Jay? Is Jay your friend also? Yes. Because he came in here with another name called Jay Guardian, Guardiogli. <laughs> Guadagnoli. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did. Look at that. Good job, Jay. Oh, okay. Hi, Tim Heal. Tim Heal comes to us from the UK. How are you doing? Hi, Tim. How about in the chat? Have you guys have any um, experience with meditation? Because that's what we're talking about. How the chapter we're reading in this book today is about how meditation is going to inspire our painting. Let us know in the chat. I'll check in a few minutes. Next thing I'm going to go on to number two, reflection. After taking time to center or meditate, reflect on the feeling of I am. How would you answer the question? Begin, begin to write in a free-flowing fashion or stream of consciousness writing without censoring yourself what is at the core of your essence. Write for up to 15 minutes in this way. At the end of your 
entry write out the words i am blank five or so times fill in the blanks with what connects to you first and some examples could be i am light and shadow i am unbridled joy i am a spectrum of colors i am infinite i am breath spirit emotion and thought then the next thing is art page following the light so alina hennessy goes on to say this is her she who's um, writing this right now i paint in an instinctual style a practice in which i feel my way by responding to each mark made working with india and acrylic inks along with acrylic paint and water-based paint pens gives the work layers layers of depth water water is an important element in my work as i wish to have the free form expression of fluidity shown as i add a lot of water to the ink and layers of acrylic adding the shears the, sh the sheets of gold leaf to these paintings give them an extra layer to invoke actual reflective life the piece above is an an alternate outcome using the same process used in this project so here's a picture of the the artist the guest artist who's um writing this chapter I do love hers. You like it? Yeah. I'm going to have a hard time not just copying hers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now that, that I've seen it. I like the way that it looks free, like it's a freedom of expression. I like yeah. that. And then and it's not a typical composition. It looks like she kind of just didn't worry too much about yeah, the rules. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. And then I like these little detail things. So I do like the contrast of big watery kind of looking big watery looking fluid shapes yeah and then kind of they're not fluid shapes i mean kind of like these are geometric i don't even actually think of these as organic fluidy shapes but inside of it if you look close inside i do i do see the fluidity of the wall how the water moved the paint the pigment and but i like and then i like how she added little details on top of a bigger shape of birds i think that's birds and a boat here oh here, here's another i like this painting that's another example of her work oh my oh goodness. hi hi charlene conscious business services and opportunity is charlene heal her her channel is a lot about meditation and chakra balancing well cool that's what we need so bring your vibes in here Yes, I just did a dual live stream with Charlene during our last new moon, not the full moon. I missed that one. She just did the full moon the other day, but the last new moon was like second Monday in August. And we did, we did a, a, a dual live stream. And I, instead of doing an, me doing an art activity, I did, I just showed my moon goddess my recently created moon goddess mixed media painting that actually um, had genu has genuine amethyst crystals adhered to it. So it gives it some crystal energy. And within hours, this is so funny, within hours after completing this painting, um, Paul's Blind Soup for the Soul in here uh, purchased the painting. Thank you again, Paul. Good choice, Paul. And on and then he wrote a really nice testimonial or if you, if you want to call it that of how he has never been so infatuated with a painting <laughs> and so he's Aww. so in, anyway so i'll be sharing that that's a new thing i'm doing on facebook is i had started an album calling my hat called my happy art collectors and i'm and i get a picture of them either standing next to the the artwork or holding it and then a few sentences about how they uh, you know how they feel about the art and each each day i'm posting to that album on facebook so um to share with people about 
how how my art enhances people's lives. Yep. It's always nice when someone else likes your art as much as you do. Or even more than you. Yeah. He likes my <laughs> art more than I do. That that yeah. piece the moon goddess painting. He actually loves that more than I do. <laughs> because I, I thought the face might not have uh, I probably would have worked on the face more. I had already see with my vision disability working on the, on the tiny little face like that it was so hard and it was, it was painstaking and hard that I try to avoid that. And I reminded myself because next thing I want to do um, like this month, I want to create a um, and the next week or so I want to I was thinking I want to create a sea goddess painting. Ooh. And then I remind myself, no, we're not going to show her whole body with that tiny little face again. This time it's going to be a sea goddess with mo mostly it's just all her face showing. There you so, go. <laughs> because I, it's to, with my vision disability, I'm working with my magnifying glass and the tiniest little detail brush. And even then, I can't, I can't even get it totally right. My husband actually, after a few times that I did it and I couldn't get it right, he had to. With him, he too had to. Even though he has normal vision, he had to come in with a magnifier. Even though he has normal vision, it's so that small that even with normal vision, he had to use a magnifier. And then with a fine tipped little. Um, acrylic marker just draw the two closed eyes and um the eyebrows that was it that, those are the two things that needed i had gotten the mouth the mouth was fine it was the two closed eyes and the eyebrows and he had to finally come in and do that and i'm like remind myself please do not do little tiny faces <laughs> <laughs> but it's so tempting how hard can it be right no it <laughs> Like, no, so I caught myself with the sea goddess that I want to do. I caught myself because I thought, oh, I could do it. And she could be in the same, she could be the same um, figure, the figure, the, like the um, the pose, the same figure pose. But this time she could be like with a sea, an ocean background and stuff. And then I said, no, no. <laughs> and then I, I look through, like, I look through my inspirations because I, I like to look on Pinterest or other places. Like I, I Google sea goddess. And so I can get inspiration. And I found the sea goddess face. And I'm like, oh, oh, this is, this is really good. This inspired me. So that now that I'm going to do a sea goddess probably this week and, but it's just going, it's going to be her face and her hair is going to look like, her hair is going to be like blue, like water. And she's going to be dark skin. She's going to be dark skin. And she has like, it's going to have like turquoise colored hair. And I'm going to use texture Ooh. paste. And I got, and I'm going to use old jewelry that I don't use. I'm going to use turquoise, some of my old turquoise jewelry. And that I, one piece, one necklace set that, I, no, kind of like, it's like, it is turquoise, but I think it's like a $15 necklace that I've never worn. I'm like, I'm I'm going to use this stuff instead of me buying stuff on Amazon. I am using, I'm going to go into my jewelry and use stuff. I, I don't, I don't wear. Smart. Oh, uh, who's that? Thank you. Who says I have such determination? That's Kylie. Oh, Hi, Kylie. Kylie. <laughs> Kylie coming to us from the UK. Coming from Scotland. Well, we have a lot of people showing up here today. Awesome. Uh, anybody in Facebook? Lexi's keeping an eye on our Facebook group called Nope. The We've got Artists one little eyeball, and group. that's me. Oh, say that again. Facebook has one little eyeball on our stream, and that's that's my eyeball. Oh. Yes, yeah, so today I'm dual live streaming to this YouTube channel, plus we're, I'm also my second destination the live stream is going to my new facebook group called artists with disabilities and chronic illness and lexi is a member there and we we are we are growing the group and um we're th we're there for supporting each other and sharing our art and people from around artists from around the world are joining us there let, let's read about her technique. I want to read. So right now I'm just going to read. I'm reading through and we're going to decide what activities we will do. But 
I was interested in re reading through her techniques. So here she says, number one, choose a substrate to work on, like a wood panel or aqua board. I, I actually have never used aqua board. I've, you know, I've used watercolor paper, but, and, or watercolor paper is also nice. And wet the surface with water, spread, india or acrylic ink just a few colors around in fluid circular motions choose colors that reflect your current mood warm colors give energy and and are passionate and active cool colors blue greens and purples are calming recede and at times melancholy and give peace Two, keep the layering process going with ink until it feels satisfying to you. Allow, allow the water to work the magic and create feathering, drips, and fluid organic movements. Once the background is dry, you can add and blend a few acrylic colors. Keep layering and creating movement in different directions. Three, let the surface dry. Use colored pencils and add drawings if desired. I drew a small boat with little pen pennants and swirling clouds above it. Four, if you, if you wish to add gold leaf, read the package, directions, how to apply it. Let's see, one, two, three. And number five, once everything is totally dry, add details and imagery that speak to you with water-based paint pens. I like to feel my way through the paint, and this practice takes time. After reading, after adding details with the pens, you can also go back and add more ink to the paint layer by layer. And then she says, with practice, you'll begin to find your voice with painting. Try creating these paintings with at least five layers. Whoa. Remember that acceptance of where you are is as an artist and what you when what comes through you in the moment is the most important thing. Keep allowing your creativity to unfold unhindered and you will receive immense benefits from it. I like what she said there. Let's see. Remember I like this. Remember that acceptance of remember that acceptance of where you are as an artist and that what comes through you in the moment is the most important thing. It is indeed meditative, isn't it? Yes, there's another kind of meditative um, art, which it, she's not talking, which is not her approach here, but Alina Hennessy's approach, which is um, creating a mandala. Have you, ever cre have you ever created a mandala? Not really. So that can be meditative because it can be meditative to keep doing repetitive, like repetitive actions. Like, I mean, like you, you repeat a, a dot, like, you know, dots over and over and over and over again, or repeat. Yeah. And when, when it's repetitive, that can be meditative. Have you ever experienced that? Kind of. I just kind of find it frustrating. I guess I don't get into the meditative aspect of it uh you find i'm just waiting for it to be over <laughs> yeah I, see, I know what you mean so i know that might not be meditated to some people yeah i mean i didn't do it with the goal of meditating either i've done it with the goal of putting a dot in every square right so it probably does feel different depending on what your end goal is so is there any art that you've done that is like seems meditative to you
or is it calming or yeah. do you ever, do, the art that you've done is it calming or relaxing to you I guess I just don't approach it with the goal of being calming or relaxing yeah. I have a pretty unhealthy history with ruining art for myself by putting pressure on it yeah well, I and know I am working mean. on that I, now I, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of like disappointment when it doesn't turn out. I have tried doing mandalas and it's just frustrating when I can't get them symmetrical, right? My mindset's not in the right place. Oh. Yeah, that's about uh, embracing mistakes. This artist, she didn't talk about that, but she's all, I followed one of her lessons before, which wa was all about embracing the mistakes and there's a word. Does anybody in the chat know that, uh, about Alina Hennessy's work and when this kind of art? She uses this Japanese word. I might have to look it up. The Japanese word for embracing mistakes. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to. So wabi sabi or something like that. Yeah, wabi sabi. Wabi sabi. What did you? Did somebody just say that in the chat? Uh, not that I know of. I what, managed to that? remember it. I've been I've been trying for the past half hour to remember that word. Yeah, that's it. It's, I, I'm pretty sure that is Wabi Sabi. Yeah, that's it. She talks about that. Actually, I'm surprised she didn't talk about that in this because she talks about that concept, that Japanese word a lot, Wabi Sabi, of embracing mistakes. So you've seen some of her uh, you other know, Maybe work? that's a good practice for me today. I, maybe for you too. I don't know because a lot of times I look at practices. I mean, I look at mistakes that they need to be fixed. It's like, oh, okay. Yep. Like, <laughs> and then, okay, wait, I mean, oh, I messed that up in the composition or oh, that color doesn't work. Or, no, that color doesn't work. Let me do this. And, you know, all of that really is a learning experience. It probably, it is, it all, and it all ends up being a learning experience because in the future, you probably would say to yourself, oh, well, now I kind of know that that's not going to work, but it kind of is like over and over and over again, everything keeps being a learning experience. So then it's like, I just kind of today, I do want to try to just get away from how I usually create and like, and, and I want to uh, get, have a different attitude about things that I don't like in my painting and yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm going to follow her techniques, largely because it sounds like there's a lot of drawing time that wouldn't be great for on stream. But dry, I know you mean drying take, time. You said yes, I know. So you can you you don't have a heat dryer like you don't have like a well I have like a hair an old hair dryer that I have yeah, right I here do and, I, and I can use for drying. You said yep. you don't have that. You said I do. But I mean, she's talking about five layers. No, if it's pools of water, then I would yeah. I would put a paper towel on it and sop it up, and then I'm gonna and then I am gonna draw. I would dry it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying it. I'm gonna see how it goes. But mostly, I'm trying to take away the the wabi sabi mindset more than worrying about whether the technique is exactly what she does. Mm hmm. Well, so that's what, that's what you're going to try to do today? Yep. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm trying tools. I don't stuff. have the right substrate either. And what'd you say? I don't have the right substrate either, so I think I'll be yeah, setting Nick, myself up for disappointment if I try to do exactly what she does. Do you have, oh yeah, you, you're working on packaging today, right? Yep. Oh, okay. And I'm working on mixed media <laughs> paper, which mixed media paper can take water like that. That can take water pretty good. Just as I mean, almost as good as watercolor paper. So yeah. I'm not concerned about that. But I see you're working on packaging that you've already painted with acrylics. Is that right? Yeah. So I think it can probably take water. I just don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking it's, gonna, gonna it's not going to soak in since you've no. already painted that with acrylic. I'm it's like um yep <laughs> yeah we're just gonna do what work like do work what works for you best today yep i'm just gonna hope i didn't underbind my paint and if i didn't i'm happy yeah so maybe we're just gonna we're taking we're taking this chapter chapter 
and what she said and just using it as inspiration for what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which what well, there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. I don't have to follow this like a recipe. You know what I mean? That's true. We don't have to follow this like a recipe. There's like some sometimes in the chapters I do follow more what she said that what the authors the guest artist says. Or sometimes it can just be a jumping off point. And like right now she was talking about 15 minutes of meditation. So we are not gonna do 15 minutes of meditation. <laughs> And then she talked about the stream of thought writing. I love doing stream of thought writing. Actually, I love doing stream of thought writing right on my artwork. I've done I've done a lot of that in the past where I do illegible. I know what I'm writing, but I don't want it. I, and I do illegible writing, which my my writing is already illegible as it is. But <laughs> I do illegible writing so nobody can see what I'm writing. But I I know what I'm saying, but I'll never go be able to go re read that. I'll never be able to go back and read it, which doesn't matter because I'm going to. It's just like an expression. It's like cathartic that your stream of thought writing that they teach that in the artist way if you ever re read the artist way book you, you do three pages of stream of thought writing every day and I, I did that for about six months three pages of stream of thought writing every day but um then I got doing that on my artwork too I for, for a couple of years now I love doing stream of thought writing right on my artwork which I find that cathartic of, is getting out like getting out your thoughts and feelings and all of that relates to like m not meditation but it relates to being taking taking a more relaxed approach to your art or something so so following your intuition the one thing i know is that it's all it's it's really pretty much impossible to follow your intuition on a painting completely it if you care what it looks like so yeah <laughs> like you want so you can follow your intuition a little bit like you'll say oh i know that color is going to look so good there like you get all excited like i know if i add this on certain color it's going to look so good right there and then that's like following my intuition and then and then i will look back and i'll be like oh, oh but uh, let me and then maybe that was a little bit too much of that color. I'm going to tone that down a little bit. So it's back and forth. I find it's back and forth between following your intuition and coming in with coming in with a more, a more critical mind, not too critical, but coming in with a thinking mind, the into, because the, the thinking mind is not your intuition. When you're following your intuition, you're not, you're not using your thinking mind. So it's following your feelings, your impulses, and I find that that that's hard to do completely in a whole painting. Like I said, if especially if you care what it looks like in the end. But another way to approach it that um, is that you do the whole painting, you do the whole painting intuitively, and then you come back and edit. Then you come back. Then you come back and say, okay, what things here could I edit out? So it does give you that opportunity that you're going to do the whole first layer the whole first layer, like totally intuitively, then you can come back and edit. So have a, that's what I'm doing today. But in, in Lexi, I don't know if you wanted to follow along with that, but did you say you had an idea for something? Oh, I have no ideas. Well, you, you so do you want to follow along with this? You do the whole first layer intuitively and then we come and then you come back and edit. Yep, it works for me. I'm being intuitive right now. So I really love this first layer. See, I, I always start with a unfinished page anyway. And already I'm not even sure I want to work on this page because I really, I, I like already how it looks. I think yeah, I want to work on a page that, I want to work on a page that this page, this page, I don't like so much how it looks already. Oh, there you go. Wabi sabi it. <laughs> okay, let's look at our chat. Let me see. Hi, Rosalie. So nice to see you here. Hi, Rosalie. Oh, geez, Louise. Banged my desk a tiny little bit. And then Jay had said, I think that's true for me, Diana and Lexi, and I don't know what he responded to. <laughs> Well, the important thing is that he agrees. Okay. 
So, another thing to add before you even start working intuitively is only work in black, white, and gray. Your first layer, all black, white, and gray. Well, I didn't do that. Okay, if that made it easier, but you don't have to. That's just an idea. That's yeah. a suggestion. If that made it would make it simpler for you. Um, just work in. So right now, I think I'm only going to work black, even though I do have some colors in here. I'm already starting with an unfinished page. Um, that's just an option. If you did the first layer, you did want to just work with black, whites, and grays. So like an underpainting type of thing? Yeah, because it takes the color decisions out. It yeah. takes the deal. It it takes the decisions that you need to make about colors out of the equation. Very smart. So, I I think right. Let's see. Um. I get. I guess I'm gonna do that. Gray. Gray. I got gray here. Gray, black, and white. No, that is black. I'm going to use black, gray, and white right now. And I might cover over what I have here. Black, gray, and white. I suppose instead of black, you could also pick. Because I was thinking, I don't really like the way that gray looks. And I, I want my colors pretty vivid. But I guess you could do like a dark blue. And then just yeah, in. well, instead of black, you wanted to use a dark, like a dark violet or something. Yeah. yeah. And I love painting with my pale palette knife, and I'm just doing this. And I'm just, I'm just using my palette knife straight out of this, and. And I kind of don't feel like covering her face, but I'm going to still let her face show through. And working intuitively means, okay, I, I'm I'm actually going to work. I don't want to cover over everything I did. I'm, I'm letting some of these layers show through. So I'm letting some, I'm still letting some of that red show through. Perfect. You get to choose. I'm getting, I have a question for the chat. Well, I might even put a poll in the chat. Ooh. About, well, first my, my question is simple right now. Who wants, who wants background music for this stream? And then I am going to put a question. I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to put a poll in the chat. I mean, if I get a vote, I don't think background music would hurt. Okay. That's one vote. One vote for yes, background music. I love the palette knife because, oh, God, I don't know why I like it. I like it better <laughs> than paintbrushes, I'll tell you that. For Not for painting little tiny details, of course, not for that, but for big big shapes and medium big and medium sized shapes or um it gives unexpected unexpected shapes whereas the paintbrush is like you know like oh yeah if i paint like that that shape is always the same and the thing is the weight when you scrape on paint with a palette knife it it, it creates unexpected shapes that i really like and it The, I love a good, what is this? A bright, a bright brush or a flat? I don't oh, know the difference between okay. a bright and a flat. It's just so satisfying to me. Ah, oh, okay. See, I'm trying to practice, like, 
like I already feel like I and I already work like intuitively to an, an extent. You know what I mean? I always yeah. You always are asking yourself, how do you how do you like that? How how do you like how to what happened there? How do you like that? And then I respond to it. Like I kind of what she says in this chapter is kind of like a, it's kind of a, a way that I'm already working. Of course, she probably works to an extreme in that way, but there's an element of what she's saying about in this chapter that I've already, that's kind of a way that I already work. I mean, I respond to what happens. Like, so I look and I'm like, I'm responding down to the page. Like, Oh no, I don't want more gray. I, I don't want to put more black. And then I'm thinking I'm not even, and then a lot of times I find in my work, I'm like, I don't know what to do next. I can't, I find myself, well, I could do this. I could do this. I could do that. I could do that. I'm like, but which way should I go? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the problem with, intuition is sometimes it takes you too many places and that's at once. Where you, here's where intuition comes in you don't overthink it that's it you don't overthink oh, it oh yeah you just do that's or you just doing. yeah you just do and you and you you don't overthink it and then you and then you might think about it briefly and then go with an action and then go with it go with it action yep that's probably what she means <laughs> Like right so now, I see these are some big giant shapes right here. Now I would want to add, I want to go in and add some, and I see a little bit of squiggle right here of this white right showing. Like that's probably, that's probably writing, oh, yeah. illegible writing that I've done there. And I would love to add some of that on top of there. But it, I, I got to let that dry a little bit. Or do you? You could always scrape into the wet paint to write you can but mine actually dried already oh <laughs> so i oh. can i actually could scrape into it but i can't right now because it's dried and i find that I always have to come back to something because m many times I'm like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do next. And then I've, I have to, I have to try out a whole bunch. Of, I either keep going and just try out a different, a bunch of different things and then say, Oh, that didn't work or that, or I think that worked. I'm not sure. And then, and then I actually have to step away and come back with it. And actually I have to do that kind of often step away, come back, step away, come back. Yeah, I've been enjoying my prompt cards for that because I I can step away and kind of never come back. Oh, I okay. Because <laughs> no. the longer I step away, the more I build it up in my head. It's like it feels more important the longer it sits there. I'm like, well, I better make it good. If I've been sitting on this project for a week, oh. I better come back with something fantastic. So now I'm kind of getting my prompt cards out and... Even if I don't like the prompt, at least so the prompt, I can, the it kind of makes you realize you? what you want. Hmm? The prompt cards help you? Yes. Like, have you ever heard that trick where if someone can't decide between options, you pick one for them and then you see like what their reaction is? If they go, ah, oh, no, I didn't want that. Like, are they disappointed? like if nothing else prompt cards can do that for me or i'll be like oh i didn't want to go that direction uh-huh so that's a direction if you know that that's the direction you didn't want to go yeah exactly Seems like a layer to me. I'm drying mine.
Got it. Hey, how do you do with imagining lighting? Like if you're not working from a reference photo. How do you imagining light? Yeah. I'm like, I have oh, no wait, idea. Kylie. Oh, bye, Kylie. See, she's five hours ahead of us in Scotland. Yeah, go to bed, Kylie. Oh, I guess it's like. Oh, thank you, Kylie. <laughs> like, thank you so much for stopping by. She's the person I've known the longest on YouTube. We we met each other seven years ago, within one or two months of she. I I started my YouTube channel, and then two months later she started hers. But we didn't know each other, and then and then within months we we became friends, and and we've been friends for seven years. Did you and, bounce ideas off each other? Yes. Nice. Anyway, so. Uh, she's the only person on YouTube that I'm still friends with after seven years. So she's the only one on YouTube I've known the longest like that. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we get, like, we support each other with, like, and give each other feedback. Nice. Yeah, I saw she was an admin in that group that's now the... Oh, yes, she, we started that group together, that's right. Cool, Art and Soul Studio before I change it to the auction group. What what do you do with the second layer? Do you just go over your first layer? To so depth? okay, so now the first layer, you just you just okay. So you did your first layer. Yes. So the second layer, did you use different colors or did you do the black and white thing? Black, different white, gray. What? I didn't let really me see what you're doing. Oh, let I use different colors. Okay, use different colors. So, next layer is editing. Unless, okay, here's your choice. You can continue with just totally like intuitive, I, I like to say mindless, mindless, <laughs> mindless <laughs> intuitive painting or something. Thoughtless. You can continue with that for like another layer, like on top of that, another, just one more round, one more round of that. And, and then, that's one choice or the other option is you can start editing what you've just done like okay now come in and say okay what's working here what's not like what place needs a darker color what place needs more contrast what place would i like to see more pattern what place would i like to see a brighter color or a lighter color so you know what i mean yep i'm doing that one okay editing then The thing I think about intuitive painting is like doodling. Like how many people when you doodle, like you're talking on the phone, like a long time ago, you talk on the phone and you would doodle on, an, on a piece of paper and stuff and you doodle and it's mindless. It's mindless. It's like you're doodling. And then, and then most of the times what you create is like, oh, uh, you know, it's like, like not that great. <laughs> yeah. I always have really awkward shapes that don't go well together at all. Yeah. So then I would say, I guess you take that same approach in that first layer and then in the second layer, now you come in and edit. Trying to, now you're trying to make it, make it work. Make it actually good. Yeah. Right now I'm still in the mind. I'm doing, I find in my own work, I go back and forth. I'm always, I, I work in tutorial, then I come back and I look at it. Then I work in tutorial, then I come back and look. I kind of like, I'm going, I find like that's actually my creative process. That's actually how I always work. Like I, I try something out and then I'm like, okay, do I like it or I don't like it? Okay, let's, let's get some inspiration somewhere. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me try that on my painting. And then I do that. And then I'm like, okay, does that work? How do I like it? Okay. And I'm always, that's how my, that's my creative process. So. Yeah, that's kind of mine too, but I do like the idea of at least trying to just get it almost done intuitively and then 
come back for one grand touch up. Right. I'd like to give that a try. Mostly because I'd like to be freed up a little bit from the constant overthinking. Yeah. I hate overthinking. Me I do. Too. I get caught. I can get caught up in that. Yep. Yeah, I do it so much for how much I hate it. I'm like, I'm, wow, this is the absolute worst. Let me do it for three days straight. Well, uh, when I say overthinking about, I talk about even overthinking of, like, in life, in life in general, yeah. overthinking. Yeah, so, I like, thought... like usually that comes overthinking comes in when if I have to make a decision about something. Oh yeah. Or maybe I keep overthinking about something something somebody said or didn't say or what a situation and I might overthink that. Yep. Ah. I've gotten a lot better about the social stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it helps a lot. Now I can just be like, ah, you know what? Probably made a mistake there and everyone's fine. So I'm just going to get over it. What really gets me is the day to day, like trying to do things the most efficiently in terms of both time and resources. Like, oh, how can I do this with the least amount of water or plastic? And in the end, I just end up not doing anything, which is very funny when I'm doing it in terms of efficiency, like, oh, what order should I do this in to get it all done? So you're talking about not your, you're not talking about your artwork? Yeah, I do it in artwork too, for sure. But I mean, it's pervasive. You're talking about you do that, like, like in terms of housework or something? Yeah, or taking a shower. It's like, oh, what's the order I should do all this in? How can I save a little bit of water? Oh, and it's just too much. I never think about that. Well, <laughs> don't start. <laughs> no, but so maybe similar. Yeah. I, I Similar to that would be, oh, what chores or things would be the best thing to do today? Like yeah. in what order? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And it drives me bonkers because I would get so much more done if I just picked one and did it. Well, one thing, one thing I like, one thing that kind of helps with that for me is that, well, then I think about it in the morning. I, I could plan it out and think about like, cause I know my energy. I'm like, okay, I think my energy is better spent in the morning doing this and like mindless things are better for me maybe in the afternoon and, and you know, like, and like, I, and things that require more mental effort, I think. I'm I'm better. I could be better. I might be better in the morning. I think that's a good way to do it. Yes, because you have to know yourself about yeah, where your mental energy, where your mental energy is it better in the morning, afternoon, or at night? Yeah, for a while I was trying to keep a list of like mindless activities that I could do. Yeah. So that if I found myself wandering around going, oh, I don't have the brain power for any of this, I could consult the list and be like, okay, let's sit down and break down cardboard boxes. Yeah. So you did that for a while, but you not anymore? Yeah. <laughs> so I have the issue where everything kind of needs to go on a list, and then I end up with a confusing list system. But I'm like, okay, where's this list? It's in this notebook. This list is on the counter. And I get overwhelmed <laughs> by all my lists. I know what you mean. So I have like a to-do list. I, I have like a Monday through Sunday. It's a digital. It's, I have a digital planner. I, I used to have a planner, like a real paper planner for bit, several years. But I recently, about a year ago, I, I transferred to a digital planner. So I, I'm... But it's Monday. I look at it Monday through Sunday and the the top like most important things that I need to remember, I make sure that I write I've written there. So I can consult I can consult that during the day like, OK, what are the top things I really need to do today and then I make sure I get them done. And then and then I ask myself, well, OK, I have other things that I need to do. What do I have energy for? What do I have energy? What do I really mm -hmm. feel like doing? What what you know, like that? Yeah, I do have a separate list for like things that need to get done 
and things that I just want to do, which is usually art things. It's like, this will be fun if I can just remember to do it. And I think that helps. So, Have your needs and wants. It helps if, kind of say that again. It helps if you say that again. Oh, I don't know which part to say again. <laughs> it, it just helps me to have a separate list for kind of things that I need to do versus things that I want to do. Oh, right. Yes. So what, how do you keep your digital planner is that on an app or yeah well oh uh, is it an app? i got it i actually got it through etsy you can oh. look through digital planners on etsy i bought it through etsy it didn't it only cost like 15 dollars, and it's good forever like you reuse it year after year and so it's a it's somebody on etsy who designed it and if you have problems or questions about it, you can just email her, and she and she's very and she will reply right back to you if you have, you know, problems figuring it out at first and stuff like that. But it is has to be inter yeah it is it is um integrated in you have to use some kind of this app I forget what it is to integrate it but hmm, integrate it into something like that. Oh, some let's see who's this. Hi, Alec. And hello, James. Gipe Gipe was here. Hi, James. Hello, Alec and James. Oh, hi, Davy. Davy's coming to us from was our guest on ha Halloween in July, July last Friday. Hi, Davey. Yeah, we know Jay. Jay's a big digital planner guy. He has he's tried a digital to show planner? Me his... Yeah, he's tried to show it to me. I'm just so confused by menus. But I'm starting to think maybe the menus are less confusing <laughs> than whatever the heck my current system is. I thought... I didn't. Re I thought it was. Pr I thought that one. The one I got pretty much user friendly, just to get the basics down, user friendly. And I don't know. I got. I didn't think it was too bad. I don't know. I didn't think it was too bad. And I. I like it better than a paper planner because I don't know. Because I. I can see it better because of my vision disability. I can hold my iPad up to my face. I can zoom up. And, um, yep, and you just have all your things right there. Mm hmm. That, that is a big benefit of digital. It's like I have my one device. Yes. And everything's on there. And I don't have to go to the store and buy a new notebook or new, yeah, every notes. year. And, yeah. And then the way it is, is like the digital planner can have little separate notebooks in it. So one notebook is my big planner. It's like the planner and the planner has so many options. The planner has like oh, tracking your health and tracking your spending and tracking this Ooh. and tracking health. And it, it has so many different things you could track in the, in the regular planner. And, and then, but then you can add notebooks to it. So I, so I, I I've added notebooks to it where I, journaling if i'm just journaling i got a notebook that's just for journaling and it all it all comes i guess it's all under the same app yeah so then i have this a notebook for journaling then i have a notebook and then i can click back to the main menu that shows me okay here's your here's the big planner i can click on that or i can click or in the main menu i can click on okay what do i want to do journaling right now oh i don't want to click on whatever the other things that i have there in my note uh, separate little notebooks for different things. Oh, how do you like journaling on there? I, I like it because I cannot read my own handwriting. It's like impossible. <laughs> so w if I journal handwriting, it's like I can never look back at what I wrote. 
I can't, it's impossible. Even if I write really slowly, which that's annoying. I mean, write really slowly, <laughs> yeah. print real slow and make sure it's neat. Like that's very annoying. Yeah. I like to, and I like speech to text. So that's how I journal. Like oh. I do speech to text and it types it out for me. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause I was thinking like, I don't know how much I would get out of journaling through typing. Well, for me, I, I feel know, like I a lot I of it is mean. People might not people not like that. Might not like that. Yeah. But for me, it's the only option. It's like Yeah. It's for me, it's like it's just the better option because at least I can go back. I can go back and see what I wrote if, if I want to, which I don't do that often, but I I could if I want, and it's easily that I can read what I or I read. I can easily read what I what was typed in, and and I love speed. And I actually hate typing because I type with one finger. I know exactly where all the keys are, <laughs> but on my iPad, my my finger is always hitting the wrong thing by accident, which I know yep. where the keys are, and it always making typos. Oh, it's so annoying! It makes <laughs> typos all the time. So, and then speech to text. If you, if, as long as you speak sl slow, kind of deliberately and clearly, I find that less annoying. I just speak deliberately and clearly. And for the most part, it gets it right. But I bet you got to be careful journaling about your husband when he annoys you, right? And what? If your husband annoys you and you go to journal about it, he might. Well, then I make sure I'm in another room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would just be funny to hear you talking in another room about how annoying he's been. Well, then I would tell Well, you, nothing. I don't know. Then I would just tell him. <laughs> would you? Nice. That's good communication right there. Not everything. If I feel like it's my fault because I'm just being too annoyed, like it's my fault. Like, yeah. no, like this thing that he's doing really shouldn't annoy me. Okay. That's yep. my problem. It's my <laughs> yep. issue because the thing that some things he does or doing is really that should not annoy me. I know that. So I, so, but some things that he does, but so I try not to say anything about them, but some things that like something came up last night and I just let, had to, I had to just let it out. I just had to let him know that, no, that's not like, you know, that's not, that's like, I don't know, what was the words? I just had, yes, I, like I had to communicate to him and stuff. And then that was a good communication that we had. And then, and then, it, and then, and then it was clear because it, because it cleared up miscommunications. So what was it about? What was it about? It was about the TV. Okay. I, my hearing is more sensitive than his. He drove 30 years driving a train with loud stuff going on on the train. So I think it impacted his hearing a little bit. Like he's not hard of hearing or anything, but he, my hearing is more sensitive than his hearing. So the TV, the TV, we only have the TV on for music. Most of the time we don't watch the TV for movies, but we have this thing called soundscapes and it's, it's like we play it for the music and, and um, a lot of, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but some of the times the music is a little bit louder than I would like. But so I put, I put, I put earplugs in if it's too much and I, and, or I listen to something that I want to listen to on my own and my own earphones and stuff. Or so he was already listening to something on his computer. So I said, the, 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 the music on the TV is a little loud. And so I turned it down and then he said, that's too loud. And I go, but you're not even listening. You're on the computer. And he says, and then, and then that created a little argument because I said, he goes that I wasn't compromising. And then I had to go upstairs and I say, no, I compromise times where you don't even know it. Oh yeah. That's true. I say there are most of the times I don't even say anything. And I compromise when I know, cause I know you like the level of that music, a certain level. Cause if your hearing is different than my hearing, and most of the times I don't, but every now and then, because, well, because I knew he was watching something on his computer. I didn't even think it was going to be that much of a thing. I, I didn't think it was going to be that much of a um, issue because I thought pretty much he was listening to something on his computer, but it turned out to be an issue. And that's what, uh, when I, and then I had to go upstairs and tell him, I said, no, you don't know that I'm compromising many times where you don't know that I'm compromising. So there's my big, long story. 
It was a good one. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of guilty of the thinking people aren't compromising thing just because they're better at keeping their mouths shut about it than uh, I am. Yeah, really? Like, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty vocal about when I'm annoyed by stuff. So I kind of expect other people to be the same in their, oh. you know, mm -hmm. so <laughs> trying to rebalance that a little bit, but communication does help. Oh yeah. Hold on. Somebody said, did you see my question? Nothing. I do. I do. Everything. Oh, hi, Red. Hi, Red. Hi, Susan. That's Red. Hi, Red. Oh, shout out to Red Headed Writing. She's a loyal paying channel member. And her channel's listed down below in my description box. Shout out to Redheaded Riding Hood. She's a, a wonderful channel about cooking, poetry, because she writes her own poetry, and um, storytelling, and recently travel. So check out her channels. List down below. Link down below in the description box. That's yeah, Redheaded been, Riding Hood. She's been streaming up a storm. I've caught a couple of them usually at the end. Always some fun stories in there. Oh, Alec wants to know if he he can. Let's see what. Let me see what time it is. Oh. So, where are you on your um? project oh let's see oh i see the greens yeah i definitely want to punch up some light i just don't <laughs> i don't know how to do it because i can't imagine it you said you want to punch up some light yeah i'd love to have some brighter areas i just don't know where to put them oh uh, you don't know where to put them yep well, is that one round, is the round shape symbolic of the sun? Yes. So, well, then my, then maybe you want to put it there. Yeah. May, and also maybe. Right on. I'll do it around that. There and also bit. speckles of light, like speckles of light could be different places. Uh, maybe you could, you want to outline something or maybe. Yeah, I don't want yeah, to be fully realistic with it. Yeah, you always have different options. There's it. always different choices. Yep. Like, I'm not worried about it being realistic. Right. In terms of where the light is, but. Oh, okay. It's like where, it's where you would want to put it. Like, yeah. how about where you want? Do, do you know where you want to put no. it? No. <laughs> so, so like, so I wonder, like, when you. When we try to figure out something where we want to do something in our art, is it because is, are we afraid to go with what we want because it's like, oh, a bit, would that be the right thing? Would that work? Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually try to fall back on the rules of like what I'm supposed to do, I guess, because I'm worried that my idea won't work out and then I'll feel like a chump. Well, anyway. And you would feel like a chomp? Yeah, if my idea didn't work. I wouldn't really no, be a chomp. I, I would just I be someone I... whose idea didn't work. Well, I don't know. I think that's important to like try stuff out and then actually try it out and then work with it then, like work with it then. Yep. I don't know. I think that a lot of art is, a, I don't know. That's for me. It's a lot of trial and error and a lot of stuff doesn't work. And then I got to rework it and redo it and redo it. And it's like, I guess I got over that. Maybe, maybe that doesn't bother. 
like when nobody like when I'm on camera, I am more so I am when I'm on camera, I am a little bit more self conscious of that. Like, oh, oh that uh, maybe that didn't work right. That doesn't look right. And that didn't work. But when I work on my own, and nobody's looking, I'm like all the time, it's trial and error. Yeah. Yeah, I'd actually love to get less self conscious in front of other people just because I'm like, does anyone else ever judge you negatively? Because every time I see someone else's idea not work on camera, I'm like, whoo, I feel better about myself. Look, everyone has those issues. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it would be a good thing if one person ever felt like that looking at, watching me fail miserably, right? Mm hmm. I've gotten to the same place about like going out in public without makeup in sweatpants. Yeah. Like when I see someone else not looking their best in public, I feel better about myself because I'm like, oh, yeah. they're not. They're not going to be judging me. Right. No, no, Alec, because because um, we're going to be stopping soon. Yeah, when are we stopping? 30 after? Probably. No, I mean, where are you in your process? Eh, unsure. I mean, I'll probably just move on to details pretty soon and see where that leaves me because sometimes the details are all you really need mm -hmm. like i could sit here and fuss with the light forever right well that's actually what it needs and then you could always come back to it oh that's right you yep. that a lot of times you don't come back to something is that right <laughs> yep but i'm working on all it all the time i'm always coming back to stuff because i'm just trained like that i just know that's how it works that's just my creative process i know that's how it works yep because I have, I have success with that. It's like many times I come back to something and I rework and I add something to it. I rework it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that works. That works. And it's like, so I know, I know how like that works for me. So that's why I, I'm in the habit of doing that. Yeah. I think I haven't done anything consistently enough to kind of build up the trust in the process. Oh. Because I don't do stuff. I just think about it and think about it. Oh, okay. Don't be like me. Right. So, yeah, you could get stuck there. Mm-hmm. You sure could. Yeah. I was really proud of myself on a, a little ATC I did with the prompts, though. I don't think I told you about this. Maybe I did. But I just, I tried something and I didn't like how it worked out and I had a better idea right after. But I was so pleased that I could just go, oh, that was a better idea and I would have never had that if I didn't do the worst thing first. Previously, I would have really beaten myself up. Oh. So we're making progress. Oh, that's good. Hey, on the bright side, my substrate is working. That's good, yeah. Oh, how's yours? You're not doing the pools, right? No, I didn't do that. I 
not at all. I didn't know anything that she, any, and none of that techniques I did. I just, um, I'm, I'm doing the thing where I did the first layer in blacks. I did, I had already had an unfinished page here. So I added grays, blacks. I did another layer of grays, just gray, black, and white. And then some, and then after that, I, I started working in with pens and I've been working with pens. I just been doing like fine line stuff, like linear stuff, every black and white, black and white linear stuff for the past, like for the past 45 minutes or hour. I never, I just, I could go back in with a palette. And if I see some areas where maybe there's too much line work, I might want to go back in with a palette, like a shape, like scrape some color over it. I guess that's a good way to do it. That'll build up your layers. That's one thing I really, my work is more successful when I work in layers. Yeah. That just seems to be my creative process is, it's a lot of trial and error, try and error, this worked, this didn't work. Okay, let's go over it, let's go over it. And it ends up building up layers. Yep. And you can tell when someone has layers built up underneath, it looks better. Uh-huh. I Well, I don't know, I guess it depends on the artist. Like how about, well, what about the that kind of, the art that I showed you recently with all the patterns and that, that very flat, like they work in very flat shapes. And I'm thinking, oh, I wonder how many layers is really there. It's like a lot of flat shapes and patterns. It's True. like, I don't think that they, I don't know that they are working in layers. It's a different way of working. That is true. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there are people who are really good at making it look like they have layers oh. with the way that they apply. Oh, what's the word I'm looking mm -hmm. for? I'm not going to find it. The way that they apply flat shapes. I think they yeah. can just do it in a really clever way. Oh, Jay's leaving. Bye, Jay. Get back to work. Anyway, I guess the whole the whole point of that that somehow we got away from is that I. I can pretty much stop any time and finish it up on my own. Uh -huh. I don't know where you're at in yours in terms of like what you plan to do after this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm ready to, well, I can't believe that we were on as long as we were actually. Yeah. <laughs> we had stuff to do. You said you have stuff to do? No, we had stuff to do. Had layers mm -hmm. to build up. You know? Takes time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, Red's done with her live. Oh, yeah, that's right. She 
Wait a minute. She's done with her live already? Because, oh, yeah, she, Red, you still live stream every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that right? See, one reason why it's it's nice to work on like five or five or more paintings at a time in a in a week or something, or is that when you have a come to a stopping point where you don't know what more to do on something, then you go to the next painting. And then until you come to a stopping point and don't know what more to do on it, then you go to the next one. So that's another way of that's another nice reason for working on several at the same time. Yep. And you might get ideas from Working on one. Oh, that's right. When you, you, you definitely you get ideas from working on one, and carry it over. The downside is, oh my gosh, it takes so much more workspace oh, to do it that way. No, because well, not not really. Because no? since acrylic painting dries so fast, you just lean it up against the wall. Oh my goodness. Hi, Koya Jet Channel. You're new to our champ, my live stream. Welcome. Ooh, from the Philippines. How's it going in the Philippines? Oh, are they from the Philippines? Mm hmm Oh, welcome from the Philippines. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> anyone had this happen with the, the golden high flow bottle? What? My little nozzle just popped off. Oh, I, I've never used that. I never used golden high flow. <laughs> uh oh. I like, I like your design. Like, that's like a. To me, it looks like a tree, and then some plant type thing, plant type trees yep. under that are kind shorter. And the, the big, the big one looks like a a tree kind of thing with a yeah. sun. And... Did that work? Yeah, I like like those organic tree shapes and plant shapes. I'm usually a little afraid to make trees, and I'm not sure why. I always think I won't be able to make them look tree-like. It's not that hard. You just put some like fluffy stuff on the end of a stick. Mm -hmm. And also those, there's all different kinds of tree shapes. That's true. Do you have a favorite tree? Have you ever thought about that before in your life? <laughs> Well, I guess this brings us to the end of another healing through art. And I know we kind of really went, we jumped, we used that chapter today as a jumping off point because, um, which I don't know. I think that's okay. Cause I'm not yep. trying to follow I'm not trying to follow that book, like a recipe book or anything. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's all about the mindset and about just making stuff. Yeah. And so my thing I would definitely come back to this sometime like just like many of my paintings in my art journal they're always they're just like many of them are kind of could always be worked on again so this one definitely could be it's it's not like anything finished today and it could be worked on again Yep. Same with mine. I'd love to come back in with details. Oh, I've got a little wabi sabi. We're leaving them. What did she use for the end of hers? She used paint pens. Oh, that yeah. You... That's in her final step. She uses paint pens. Oh, and gold leaf. That could be oh, fun. yeah. Gold leaf, right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And thank you for being a guest co-host, Lexi. Yeah, thank you. It was very fun. 
That's good. I guess, uh, are you doing another one next week? I, I hope to, and unless I, unless my schedule gets too overwhelming, but I'm, I'm planning on it. Yeah. All right. Well, I will be there unless my schedule oh, is okay. overwhelming. That's if good. you want to have me, I'll show up. Hopefully it's not about meditation next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Cause medita- right, okay. I, I don't have a problem with meditation, but. But anyway, you got. I definitely got to send you the link to that. The the um what's her, the meditate the meditation teacher that t- on the Calm app that does movement with meditation. Yes. You might really like that. I might give yeah. it a go. Mm-hmm. Bye, Davy. All right, bye, bye everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>